Maybe you want to regularly back up your vault, or perhaps you'd like to publish your blog post straight from Obsidian. If you're interested, see my other video on how to do that. Anyways, here's the easiest way to set up Obsidian Git. So first, create a repository or fork the Markdown repository. So this is a link blog starter. And in this video, I want to sync this repository with my Obsidian vault. So I'm going to first start with forking this repository. So just create fork like that. Step two, I'm going to download Git. So actually on Mac OS, Git is already downloaded, but if you're on Windows and Linux, just click these links and follow the instructions. Step three, I need to create a personal access token from GitHub. So essentially what this is, it provides the proper authentication so that you can access your files within GitHub, which is this cloud repository. So how we do that is we actually click into the top right corner, click settings, scroll all the way down, click developer setting, click personal access token, tokens classic, and then we're gonna generate a classic token. So I'm just gonna call it token, set the expiration date to no expiration, unless you wanna go and generate a new token every like 90 days or so and then we're going to give it access to all our repositories Th these are the requirements needed for the obsidian git plugin to actually sync with github itself so i'm going to generate that token awesome so copy this token and make sure you have it like stored somewhere safe so i'm just going to paste in here call it github token like that okay cool yeah so i have my personal access token and then i'm going to go install the obsidian git community plugin. So here is an empty vault. I just created this vault for the sake of the video. And I'm just going to turn on community plugins and install Obsidian Git right now. I'm also going to enable that. Uh, it's going to say fatal, no, not a GitHub repository because it just isn't. Yeah. So install Obsidian Git community plugin. And then I'm going to create a folder to store the repository. So I'm just going to create that folder. I'm just going to call it remote blog. And then for step six, I'm going to run the command clone an existing remote repository. So just run that clone. And then it's going to ask for a remote URL. So what it's going to look like here, this URL, you're going to have to include your personal access token, which will help authenticate it for future requests. Over here, I'm going to copy this URL. This is the link to my repository. You could pretty much find it here. If you look in the, in the link, here's my username. Uh, here's the name of the repository. So I'm going to copy this link and uh, paste it over here. You'll see that there is a space for uh, your token. So I actually copied that token earlier and I pasted it over here. I'm going to copy that again and paste it right here. So it's going to ask for a directory to clone the repository to. And that's where I created the folder earlier uh, called remote blog. So we're going to clone our repository in there. So it cloned the new repository and now it's telling me to restart Obsidian. So I think that's actually the next step. So I typed in the folder and now I'm going to restart Obsidian. Here we go. So just open Obsidian again and cool. So I'm going to try now making edits to some of my notes like cool edit. Run the backup command and push one file to my remote repository. So running the backup command. Now let's actually check the remote repository and refresh this page. Cool, a cool edit over there. And yeah, that's it. It's pretty easy now that we have all our Obsidian files synced. So if you make any changes over here, these files will be synced to Obsidian. On a side note, we can actually set up like different configurations. For example, if you want to automatically commit and push files like automatically, you can do that in the setting. Um, I'm not going to talk too much about that here, but yeah, you can do that.